What's up everyone, I'm Earl, I'm the Rookie Woodworker, and for today's video, we're going to go over how to make a last minute Christmas gift idea, and the idea we're going to go with today is a tissue box holder. We're going to make a box to put the box in to make this box look prettier. So let's get to it. All right, so with there only being a couple days until Christmas, this is definitely a last minute Christmas idea. Um, so if you got somebody left on your list that you have not bought anything for them, uh, this project here, it, it only takes a, about two hours, maybe a little less. So uh, you're still capable of doing this one. So uh, let's get to work. So when I'm drawing out the dimensions for this box, I want to leave a little bit of space in the box around this tissue box because uh, some of the brands have some slightly different size variations. And also you don't want your tissue box to go getting shoved in there pretty tightly into the box and, and the person you're giving this to will never be able to get it out. With that in mind, let's start milling down some lumber. Yes, my... Uh, my planer is still on the floor. I still haven't built a stand for it, but that is coming up sometime in the next two months. I'll build something for that and uh, probably post a video about it for you all to see. Nice thing about this project is you can do it with one board that's about eight inches wide uh, and, and less than three feet long, uh, and you'll be able to knock this one out. Being that I tend to use rough cut lumber a lot, I like to run an edge over the jointer first before I go to the table saw. That way I have a straight edge to run across that, uh, that table saw fence to uh, make sure every cut and every board is straight. And this piece here was super crooked, so it took quite a few passes to get it straight. Before we go cutting this piece up, I'm going to cut my 45 degree mitered edges on the table saw the whole way down the length of the board. And then we'll cut it up and it should form a perfect box. All right, so I got my miters cut on my miter saw, but you know what rookie mistake I made? I never checked the angle of my blade. I just set it on what the table saw says 45 degrees and went for it. Um, man, I hope I cut it right. Whew. We'll find out. Ugh. Well, that sucks. Fortunately, I left a good bit of extra space in the inside for the tissue box just in case the other brands had bigger uh, tissue boxes. And uh, so that gave us a little bit of extra room to play with. So I'll just go ahead and run them back over the table saw again and give it a little bit of a haircut to get that tuned in uh, 45 degrees even. And then we'll uh, go on from there. All right, so now I'm ready to cut this up into uh, its four sides. I'm going to uh, try to cut around some knots. I don't want any huge knots in the piece because knots tend to cause wood to crack and fall apart. And with these pieces being small, uh, it's likely that the crack will go through the whole piece. So we'll try to avoid them as much as we can. Yeah, that's way better. They're just sitting there, not glued up right now, but... Once we get them clamped together, they're gonna they're gonna look pretty darn good. Yeah, if you do it right the first time, you don't have to do it twice. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and uh, cut out the bottom out of some quarter-inch scrap plywood that's laying around. And I'm gonna use my. Uh, miter saw to go ahead and cut out the groove that the bottom's going to ride in and, and I'm doing that simply because I'm too lazy to get my uh, 
my router table out to do this since it's a mobile router table and I kind of like squirreled away in a special spot to uh, basically hide it um, so it kind of makes it a pain they drag out and use so you don't really want to do that for a small little thing like this so it just seemed easier to use the uh, the miter saw for this instead but yeah uh, using the uh, router table with a quarter inch bit would work just fine and we'll do a little test fit and make sure the bottom fits in all the pieces and everything lines up right and uh, give it the thumbs up now you don't need a laser engraver to do this project if you want to let the wood do all the work for you that is perfectly fine there's plenty of beautiful woods that look great with this but I made this as a Christmas gift and the person that this is for I think is really going to appreciate this step here now it's time to glue this thing together uh, yeah just slap some glue on it I'm using uh, painters tape to hold it together basically as my clamps uh, I found that to be perfectly fine I've never had a, a bad joint from a painters tape uh, glue up it's been been pretty good I wouldn't do cutting boards like that but for boxes it works out pretty well So out of the rest of that wood, we're going to cut out a square piece that's going to fit in over top of your tissue box that your, your tissues will pull out through a hole in the middle of it. Uh, that way it just kind of weighs the tissue box down. That way when somebody goes to pull a tissue out, it just don't like pick the whole tissue box up out of the box there. We'll start that hole with uh, two Forstner bit holes on each side. I uh, went with I think an inch here and uh, make sure you use a piece of wood on the bottom of that thing uh, so that whenever the Forstner bit goes through the other side it don't cause a bunch of blowout on the bottom of your wood it'll it'll cut it through nice and cleanly if you have a nice piece of wood at the bottom of it just like that nice and smooth no tear out at all Then we'll go and uh, try to find a nice circle object to make a shape that'll connect those two holes. And uh, no, not that. Uh, let's see, is it? What kind of angle is that going to give me? Uh, nah, not that either. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's the one right there. Yeah, we'll use the use the uh, underdrive pulley. That'll be a good one for this great shape then we'll just uh, take the time on the uh, scroll saw to uh, cut this out nice and slowly uh, make sure those lines are nice and straight and that uh, the blade don't end up curving as it's cutting through the wood. You want that cut to be nice and straight. Alright, so a few things about this. One, whenever you're installing and uh, or changing out a blade, make sure the teeth are facing downward because you want the teeth to be pushing the piece into the table while it's cutting that way whenever it's pulling upwards it's not trying to cut upwards and trying to throw the piece up upwards um, this right here helps hold your piece down to the table you don't want it to be so tight to the piece that you can't maneuver it around but you want it to be tight enough that it's not rattling the piece back and forth and then we'll use the spindle sander to smoothen out uh, any uh, inconsistencies after sawing it um, this is a tool that I, I don't use very often in my shop but when I use it it is really instrumental in the piece that I'm using it on it's it's a it's a good thing to have around a spindle sander and it is time for sanding fortunately the uh, laser engraver cuts deep enough into the wood that uh, a little bit of sanding it don't touch any of the engraving at all because it's like it's like a millimeter two millimeters deep into the wood so it don't really have any interference but I'm also wondering 
Do any of you guys round off your or soften your corners with a 220 sandpaper whenever you get to that? Because that's what I do, and I, I don't even know if that's the right way to be doing that. Let me know in the comments below. I'm, f I'm finishing it off with a spray on poly here. Uh, I, I like his finish, it's pretty easy to use, so uh, I tend to go to it a good bit. But if you need to get this done in a hurry, feel free to use like a, a wipe on oil, like a teak oil or something like that. That way you can get it done and then some wrapping paper in no time. But yeah, that is the finished piece. And if you're making this for Christmas, you better get on it now because Christmas is coming and coming fast. But like I said earlier, it's a quick about a two hour project. Uh, the thing that takes the longest is waiting on your finish to dry, but depending on what finish you use, that can be pretty quick. So uh, get to it. But as always, if you like this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you have any questions, hit the comments below and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. If, uh, if you want to see more videos like this, I, I got a ton of content on the channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to let you know the next time I post a video. But until next time, make something awesome.